And now investors are focusing on the next 10 years, which is you know, a potential AI revolution. And NVIDIA is Hello everyone, today our guest is Will Rind, CEO of Granite Shares. Will Rind believes that he has identified the most important and recession-proof stocks that investors should have in their portfolios, the near-term future, and the macro analysis of the economy all discussed in this video. So buckle up and get ready for an exciting journey through the world of crypto. Subscribe, like, and share our channel to embark on this adventure with us. Join us as we uncover the latest developments, explore investment opportunities, and unravel the mysteries of this ever-evolving industry. Thank you for choosing Crypto Highlights, and we look forward to being your trusted source for all things crypto. Amid growing concerns of a potential default by early June, United States President Joe Biden and House Majority Leader Representative Kevin McCarthy have reportedly reached an agreement in principle to raise the federal government's multi-trillion dollar debt ceiling. According to a May 28 report from Reuters citing two sources familiar with the negotiations, the tentative agreement to raise the $31.4 trillion debt ceiling was reached after a 90-minute phone call between Biden and McCarthy on May 27. Since publication time, Biden has confirmed via Twitter the existence of an agreement in principle, explaining that it will prevent the U.S. from facing a catastrophic default. Biden noted that, over the next day, the agreement would go to the U.S. House of Representatives and Senate. He urged both chambers to pass the agreement right away. I think the analogy I would use, David, is that it's the if gold is insurance, you buy insurance because you hope you'll never have to use it. But you buy insurance because if there is a disaster, you have something in place. The analogy with something like Argentina is you don't want to buy the insurance policy after the house is burned down because then it's going to be unaffordable. And what's happened in countries like that is inflation. This is again, the, this is a textbook case of how inflation can turn into hyperinflation. And by the time it's hyperinflation, it's too late. Because as, as you said, you, you're, you're earning your living, you've got your savings in the local fiat currency, and it's depreciating so quickly that almost whatever you, you put in, you have to do it, you're raised against time, but by then it's too late. You have to have a holding in gold, or it could be whatever it may be, real assets, but you have to be in those safe haven assets before this happens. And this has you know, happened time and time again around the world. And that's why countries like Turkey, for example, um, that is itself experiencing huge amounts of inflation at the moment, why culturally there's a big affinity to gold because people know they don't trust the fiat currency. They can't trust the fiat currency. And so there has to be an alternative, but you have to have that in place already. Unfortunately, I know that's probably very uh, disappointing or disheartening to those that haven't, but you know, that you, you, have to, you have to prepare for these things. And the bar ETF that Granite Shares has constructed, uh, tell us how that product works for the average investor who may not be familiar with ETF. So it's, it's a product that tracks the gold price. Is it, yeah. is it redeemable in gold as well? Okay, so bar, the bar is the ticker code. So BAR um, is the ticker code for the Granite Shares Gold Trust, which is a gold ETF. And the whole reason it exists is so you can own physical gold in a portfolio. So it tracks the spot price of gold up or down, obviously, depending on the movement of gold. And the reason it does that is because we own physical bars of gold in a maximum security vault in London. And so by holding just physical gold, you get direct exposure to the spot price. The fund doesn't have any counterparty or credit risk. Um, that comes with owning gold derivatives or any other kind of proxy for gold. And very simply, it just does exactly what it says on the tin. It will track the gold price because it owns physical gold and anybody can buy it that has access to a brokerage account. So the share price is one one hundredth roughly of an ounce of gold. So take whatever the, the current gold price is and divide that by 100 and you get roughly the share price. So you can look at the share price and see the correlation. Um, but really, it's just designed so that you can own gold in the portfolio. And 
you know, not too long ago, it was difficult to do that, um, to own gold in a stock portfolio. And so now with everybody that has access to a brokerage account and everybody's looking to put, you know, every asset they want to own in a brokerage account, that's where something like bar comes in. Is it, It's a way that you hold gold in your brokerage account. Uh, your overview of the tech sector, um, the big tech names today, they've certainly taken a hit because of the, 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 the stock market last year. Uh, what do you think is going to happen this year? Are we due for a rebound? Yeah, I mean, the, the performance, if you look at the performance of the market year to date, surprise, surprise, when I said the market, the S&P 500, you know, surprise, surprise, it's all of the major tech names that are driving performance in the market. It's, you know, the Googles, the Microsofts, the Amazons, the NVIDIAs, um, Tesla. It's, it's all of the stocks that were particularly out of favor when interest rates were ramping up dramatically last year um, to the ones that are now very much in favor in this market as people now start to focus on growth. And again, the reason is that the results have all been good. Earnings have been strong. Um, and there's certainly in cases where we've seen even you know, some weaker earnings, they haven't been as bad as the market is expected. And so those companies, you know, typically they're oligopolies or monopolies in their particular sectors. They have incredibly resilient business models and you know, very strong margins. And they're driving, so far today, they're driving the market higher. And if you look at uh, something like NVIDIA in particular, I'll just pick out because we have a, uh, a leveraged single stock uh, ETF on NVIDIA. You know, that's become you know, part of this latest craze for AI. And you know, a company like NVIDIA has gone from being you know, highly correlated with semiconductor companies um, and you know, a big player in video games and even the metaverse, but that almost been completely thrown out of the window. And now investors are focusing on the next 10 years, which is, you know, potential AI revolution. And NVIDIA is you know, one of the companies I think that people would identify with immediately as being a potential winner in this AI race. And so we've seen a huge amount of interest in that. It's near, it's near the end of May, and there doesn't seem to be a resolution made just yet. So is this really a concern for investors? I've talked to an economist who rated the chance of a default at up to 20%, which is not insignificant. What's your probability if you want to assign one? Yeah, um, I, I, I think, look, I think that we won't get to a default um, situation. And I hope that common sense will prevail and we'll be able to, to move past this. But there is some chance that you know, we end up in a situation similar to what we had in 2011, where um, the debt ceiling ended up in a downgrade, a sovereign debt downgrade for the U.S. for the first time, and the U.S. lost its AAA credit rating. So anything like that, I mean, it's not a default, um, doesn't have to be that extreme, but um, even another downgrade or even just dragging these negotiations out where the Treasury officially runs out of money, all, all of these things will be negative um, for the market. And we're already seeing that in terms of risk off behavior, you know, with the market down again today. I, I don't think this is a time when people are, you know, jumping in um, with big buy orders. And if anything, people are loading up on gold and other forms of uh, hedge assets, you know, just in case, you know, something dislocates here. When we do, if we do get a, a sovereign debt downgrade, uh, first of all, what does that mean for, for interest rates on existing debt? I'm assuming it'll go higher, right? I, I think so. We were already seeing that in terms of yields moving up as people dumping uh, certainly shorter-term treasuries, uh, worried about that potential. Um, so yes, absolutely, if we were to get into a situation um, where you know, we were in, in a downgrade or you know, heaven forbid something worse, uh, I think you would see treasuries sell off. Um, but again, I think... You know, people looking for, for hedge assets, looking to buy, buy gold at this time, um, but certainly not to take risk at this particular moment. Uh, but just in the note of, 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 of a pause, uh, certainly we've seen Jerome Powell not agreeing with his own Fed staff about a, a projection of a mild recession by the end of the year. I wonder if he thinks that, well, he said, he verbally said that he believes growth will continue. I wonder if that's an indication, though, Will, that he thinks he's going to hike another time uh, sooner rather than later. And he did say that markets have been wrong when pricing in rate cuts this year. Um, so you're right about market expectations, but I just wonder if market expectations are in line with Jerome Powell's 
expectations. No, we'll, we'll have to see. It's obviously the big question because the market is expecting rate cuts, has been really since the beginning of this cycle. Um, and really the question is now that as we you know, roll into June, you know, do we see that you know, for the end of the year and how, how likely that is? And I think that I'm tend, I, tend to sort of, I tend to side with the Fed on this one in that you know, providing that we don't see something drastic happening um, in the economy, I think they have more room to keep rates you know, where they are for longer, and especially given inflation remains stubbornly high. Yes, it's coming down, but it's not falling like a stone. Um, and it certainly not, doesn't show any sign of you know, dropping close to the, the 2% mark. Um, so I think that does give them more latitude to just hold things where they are, providing the economy doesn't fall apart in the process. But I don't, I don't, think, I don't think that's certainly that's not my case um, for the rest of the year. I think that you know, things are holding up quite well. Um, and obviously, absent some, some shock from somewhere um, that you know, we, we're not fully aware of, that I think the market can stay you know, fairly resilient. Also, don't forget to smash that like button if you find our videos informative and valuable. Your feedback is crucial in shaping the future of our channel and helps us understand what content resonates with you the most. Sharing is caring, and we encourage you to spread the word about crypto highlights. Tell your friends, family, and fellow crypto enthusiasts about our channel. Together, we can create a thriving community of individuals passionate about cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology.